I recently featured this knife on the channel, except it wasn't this knife. It was Jock's Knife. Uh, my good buddy from Jock's Knife um, had one sent to me to check out before I sent it to him, and I fell in love with it, so I got my own. This is the Microtech Stitch Ramlock Edition with the fluted aluminum handle. Now, I know we knife lovers, collectors who make videos are always trying to get you to hear how awesome they sound. And it never comes through. I'm sure it's not coming through now, but I, I have to at least try. Uh, the aluminum uh, handle on this really makes for an amazing sound when you open and close this knife. That is neither here nor there. That's just how I feel about it. And I'm sure you didn't hear what I was talking about, but I had to get that out of the way. All right, so the Microtech Stitch, this is a, a Borka Blades uh, custom interpret, uh, interpretation of the Borka Blades custom uh, by Sebastian Berenji, who, um, man, his knives are so fine, so exquisite. His, his handmade custom knives are so aggressive and beautiful. Um, I, I really love his designs. I would put him in the in a similar camp as um, Bast, uh, Bastien from uh, Bastinelli Knives. Just gorgeous, deadly weapons. I guess is what I would I would say. But uh, the the uh, stitch here is uh, uh, I'm not going to retread old ground, but it is an incredibly aggressive uh, looking blade here. Uh, it comes to a point that is so close to a dagger. Uh, diamond at the tip. You can see that that swedge comes just shy of the tip, uh, that, so that the tip isn't so thin, I, I would assume. But once you get past that tip, which uh, doesn't take much effort, it turns into a diamond shape. It's like a dagger. This is an incredibly um, well-set-up thrusting blade. <clears throat> but also the approach in the hand, the approach, the approach of that nearly straight edge uh, just puts the point in the center and gives you a tr a, a, um, a trailing edge uh, for slashing, which is pretty amazing. Um, I've opted for the serrated uh, version. If you saw my uh, video about the amphibian, which I think came out before this, um, you'll know I've, I've been digging serrations lately, and uh, I love Microtech serrations. And one thing that I really... Um, and liking about them these days is how, I, I don't know, maybe we're all thinking about the collapse of society and maybe we're all thinking about uh, the knives we might happen, in, uh, happen to have with us. <laughs> and uh, I just know that the serrations will cut uh, forever. They just really will. They will just keep cutting. Especially these, I, the cold steel ones are really good and they last a long time. Though they're very thin, you'll knock some of them off. Those will still cut too, but... Um, I mean, this edge, the edge of this blade is so thin and so sharp. Um, I'm sure this will, even when it dulls out, it'll be a, 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 a decent cutter. Uh, but with those serrations, um, this and the M, M390 MK blade steel, I think, think this thing is just going to go forever. Have I expressed my feelings on serrations adequately? I don't think I have, but uh, I'm going to stop right there. Because I love that logo. I love that Talon logo. I think it's one of the coolest logos ever for any company anywhere. I just think it's so wicked. So I love that they have that on the blade. Uh, Microtech is the only company that I actually look forward to billboarding on. Like this. I love that billboarding. I, I would be disappointed if it wasn't there. Um, but there aren't too many companies I feel that way about. So good, good design of knives, good graphic design on the blades. Okay, so what about this blade? So this is uh, a nearly four inch blade. Let's see, now I'm talking out of school. Yeah, it's it's three and three, almost three and three quarters. No, what is that? That's uh, nine sixteenths. Three and nine sixteenths, I guess we'll say. Uh, but it's got a much smaller cutting edge because of that epic choil, which at first was a little bit of a turnoff. Three, uh, about three and an eighth of cutting edge. Uh, but, but ergonomically speaking, like, that choil is amazing. 
It, it is amazing. If you were going to be hard working with this, which you know I won't, but if you were going to be hard working with this and uh, doing your things and getting up in your cut or whatever the hell you're doing with this knife that's not fighting um, or saving, you know, saving lives, uh, you're doing some cutting. You're cutting that cardboard. Whatever you're doing, being up right up here feels amazing. It's like, oh, let me see. It's like the SNG or, or any of... Uh, any of these striders where you just want to use that choil. It doesn't like when you're back here, it feels weird. You want to be up there. It's kind of the way this is. Um, but actually this one feels better back here too. Um, something I like about this knife in particular with that huge choil is how, uh, how comfortable and how effective it feels from here. Actually, even with that inch and a quarter uh, between my hand and the blade, and that's because there's no footing here. You're going straight into the edge. And I'll show you what I mean. And please forgive me. I'm going to show you what I mean by rolling in a 100% fake. This was a, a part of a, this was just thrown in on a trade I got recently with Dave. Uh, he had this, passed it along to me. Um, and it is fake. Uh, it is totally a counterfeit. But there are some aspects to it that are very accurate. I mean, it is a very accurate fake. And one of those things is right here uh, on the auto stitch. There's that choil and then there's this sort of backing here. So that if you have your fingers way up there, it's not going to slip up onto the blade. And that's all well and good. Um, but I got to say, I like having the lack of footing. Um, so that if you're in this position and you're slashing, I mean, this is what I think about, okay? Uh, so me, as we used to say. Uh, if you're slashing, you're, uh, even though you've got this giant space between your finger and, and, the, and the blade, wherever you land, it's starting to cut. You're, you're in no risk of hitting something dull before you engage that blade. You're just tearing immediately into this. Uh, so people, I've heard people mention how they don't like that on these new Ramlock stitches. Well, I'm here to say I I do like it. Um, I think it I think it makes this choil area less non-functional uh, when you're back here because of course it's non-functional when you're back here. But if it's an entryway into a cut, into a slashing cut, well then it's not useless. So I approve for what that's worth. Uh, so here you've got uh, T20 uh, the giant T20 uh, Torx. Um, on the pivot there, really nice jimping down here in that choil. Look at that, so nicely sculpted on all sides. And you can see how thin the blade gets. It's very, very thin, very sharp. And, and then you have the lock, the ram lock, which unlike most bar locks, which use the Omega Springs housed in each side of the scales here, uh, this has one spring in the center coiled around a pin that goes into this block. I'm not sure if this block is titanium or steel or what it is, actually. Uh, but that's a, instead of a bar lock, it's a block lock. That's my own term. Or a ram lock, I guess. But you see, here's a, here's an axis lock. And you can see there's the pin right there. That's what settles in over the blade. Here you have a whole giant block of metal engaging that tank. So very, very strong. Uh, I, I do remember hearing that the spine whack failed on very early versions of, of one of their ram locks, but they got right on top of it. And these things are sweet. Do you hear that? Do you hear how it sounds when it comes into this beautifully fluted aluminum handle? Um, on my first uh, video of this, where I was showing off Jock's version of it, I called it titanium. I think I, I just have titanium on the brain. It just kind of comes out. Really beautiful geared backspacer. Uh, makes this pretty good in uh, reverse grip. You've got this peak over here you can put your thumb over. Um, to me, that's pretty, I don't know. It's, it's pretty far from the blade there, but but still. I mean, look, that's almost an inch and a half there. But still, uh, if you're slashing in this reverse grip, which I don't recommend because you have you have to be super close to, you know, you see in movies, people will, will slash in reverse grip, but you have to be in extremely close range, like 
here to make that work. Uh, you have no reach when you're slashing, uh, you know, when you're slashing in reverse grip. You, you really don't have the reach, whereas when you're slashing with forward grip, you can, yeah, you have a lot more reach. So um, I don't know how I got on that, but if you happen to find yourself in this position and you're slashing like that, you, you're gonna go right into that serrated cut there and, um, and do great. You'll do fantastic, I know it. Uh, I really like this thumb swale here. Um, ordinarily, uh, harpoons don't don't uh, excite me, but is that a harpoon at that angle? Yeah, it must be. That huge swedge, beautiful. There's the uh, Sebastian Berenges, um maker's mark. He's the guy behind Borka Blades and behind this, if I failed to mention that. Loop over pocket clip. So here's something I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out this fake again, this Fugazi to show you, to show you. I, I, this is the very first run had a clip like that. Um, and like the Amphibian, uh, not a loop over pocket clip, giving you some stuff to grab onto uh, at the end, but they changed that to a deep carry pocket clip and did not really get much for it. And what I mean is look, look at where they are. Yes, this is a fake, but it's a it's a pretty accurate fake. And that deep carry is like uh, putting it about one eighth of an inch deeper in the pocket, and in and it's putting those damn screws in the path of your uh, of the um, of your pants coming in your your pocket seam. And uh, you know, I I saw someone's video. Cool guy, I subscribed to him, but he was like, way, 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 big screws in the way, you know. And and really, it is a pain in the ass. I don't like having a big pants bill. And that really is a buzzkill because you really are, you know, every time you put it in, take it out, put it into that, those screws are menacing your pants. So that is kind of a bummer. Uh, but what's really cool that kind of make up for it here is you can see the clip there is cut out and cut out. So if you want to change the, um, take off the clip or change it or whatever, uh, all you have to do is back those screws out just a little bit. You don't have to remove the screws all the way and then just, and it comes right off. Whoops. And it comes right off, which is a really, I think that's a, that's a brilliant design. Who doesn't hate those little fucking, excuse me, those little screws just falling out and rolling all over the place. This is a great, um, a great solution. So on one hand, I'm not crazy about the giant tall, like, like very tall screws, like audaciously tall screws, but that design feature is pretty cool. Uh, I also don't mind the billboarding on the clip and I like that it's dated there. February 24, great, uh, great actuation, great opening action with that hole, opening hole. You can, you can do it in all the ways you think, uh, think you can, including you can just shake it out too. Um, shake that ramlock blade out. Uh, let me show it with a couple of knives uh, real quick. There it is with the amphibian. <clears throat> Handle nearly the same size, blade a bit shorter. Here it is with the auto SOCOM. Love that knife. And then here's here's a something you might be wondering about. How does it compare with a Yojimbo? <clears throat> so very similar blade size, but overall larger package. Let's see here. Uh, well, pivot to pivot, obviously the blade comes way out, but let's account for that choil. Not a huge difference in uh, just a little bit more of edge length, just a really like an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch in, uh, I'm going to go an eighth of an inch in ledge, ed, edge length difference, but look at how much bigger. Oh, it's a different different style knife. You know, this one you want to stash and pull out when you have to cut someone's thigh open. And this one, um, this one's a little bit heavier, a little bit sturdier, dare I say. Not that this is not perfectly sturdy, uh, but stout with its aluminum frame. This is maybe one you're putting in your pocket to 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 do something a little more daring than just uh, walking down the street? I don't know. I don't know, I'm not a man of adventure. Though, I have the knives for it. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. This is such a great knife. Uh, I'm in a microtech phase. You're gonna have to bear with me. All right, take care.